Well, that was beautiful. Okay, this time, let's go over here. I own a lot of TV shows on DVD, ranging from comedy and drama to reality and documentaries. Let's take a deeper look at one I've covered before. The Simpsons. Last time I talked about The Simpsons, I covered my introduction to the series, the beauty of mixing the series with pizza, and I talked about that one time I marathoned nearly 650 episodes in only 6 weeks. Now let me tell you about when I collected the series on DVD. Before we do this, we need to rehash a few stories. Why the hell not at this point? We've already done my favourite TV show, a handful of Disney movies, and an old TV service. So let's do another one. If you ask me, everybody in this theatre is a giant sucker. Especially you! This story begins in 2007 when I saw the Simpsons movie. I barely knew what the series was, or who these characters were, but 14 year old me loved what I saw. Just to be clear, this is what my juvenile teenage sense of humour found super funny and ultimately cemented my love for the series. So long, losers! I know, I know. I was 14 years old. Give me a break. One casual browse of the TV guide tells me The Simpsons air nightly on Sky One. Add in some pizza and you've got a great way to spend a Tuesday night. Now of course, given the time, I missed the series on VHS. I knew about them, but I knew nothing about the series, and either way, I was too young to be watching a show like this. DVD on the other hand was right up my alley in the late 2000s. The first Simpsons DVDs I ever saw were two my dad owned, Christmas with the Simpsons and Too Hot for TV. There were probably more, but these were the two I actually remember. I have my own copy of Christmas with the Simpsons, so we'll start here. Five episodes on one disc, four that actually relate to Christmas, and one about Homer having a snowplow business. Also one of those episodes features Lisa finding her own religion, but details, details. Beyond some pretty bland presentation, this release is pretty good. If you're looking for some seasonal content from the first 13 or so years of The Simpsons, there you go. You get to see where the show started, and you get Mr. Plow, debatably one of the best episodes the series has ever had. So you can't go wrong there. Let's give it 4 out of 5. Then of course, there's the movie. It's by far one of my favourite animated movies of all time. Up there with Toy Story 2, Ed, Ed and Eddie's Big Picture Show, The Lion King, and Pinocchio. Like I've said before, this is what introduced me to the series, and the rest is history. It may not be an artistic masterpiece, but for me, it holds up really well after 15 years. Simple, yet fake, 5 out of 5. Okay. Formality's over. We need to talk about the rest of this collection, and it starts with a story. After watching the show for a couple of years, I discovered the show was available on DVD at that point up to season 12. It would be the first time collecting an extensive TV series, not counting the Looney Tunes DVDs and a few other miscellaneous bits and bobs. Over the course of two years, I would collect the first nine seasons and I loved them. While I don't think they were on the same level, these became the new Looney Tunes. If I went anywhere overnight, I was guaranteed to have a box set or two on hand. Doesn't matter which set I had, I had enough to last me for my time away from home, ranging from great episodes... Failure to wait by vehicle... $250! ...to fascinating bonus features including documentaries, audio commentaries, deleted scenes, even some vintage commercials. Crispity, crunchity, peanut buttery butterfinger. Lesson number three. Nobody better lay a finger on my butterfinger. Now of course, bonus features will vary from season to season, but if you're only interested in episodic content, then I don't see how you can go wrong. The episodes are great, the packaging is excellent, the bonus features can be fascinating if you're in the right mood. Just pick a season you like and enjoy. Like I said, I don't think they were quite on the quality level of these gems, 
but they more than did the job when I was really into the show almost as much as I was with Cartoon Network, and I appreciate them for that. Plus, these days, you can get the first two thirds of the series for dirt cheap, which is even better. On that note, let's jump ahead 12 years. I no longer have my original Simpsons DVDs. You move houses a couple of times, things will inevitably go missing. Plus, with my track record of VHS and DVD organisation, I'm lucky I haven't lost more, VHS especially. So when I saw the first 10 seasons of The Simpsons show up on eBay for only £40, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. After all, I had just finished collecting another show, so it would be nice to pick up a show I actually like. <sighs> Look, I'd like to tell you what it was like rewatching the show, but I can't. I'd like to tell you how rewatching the Jutal saga was fucking torture and how Jutal League champions broke me, but I can't. I'd like to tell you how Trainer's Choice was a great idea that just needed more work, but I can't. I'd like to tell you why I hate Pokemon Black and White with a blinding passion, but I can't. I can't touch this franchise, as much as I have things to say. I covered why many years ago. I'll just leave it at Pokemon is a show that's perfectly fine if you watch one episode per week, but any more than that and you begin to notice just how bad the rating is with the show, and it's noticeable as early as the appearance of that giant Dragonite at Bill's Lighthouse. Right, enough of that. Let's talk about the rest of these. now. I don't want to talk about the overall quality of The Simpsons. I did that last time. The first nine seasons are the best, and the more recent seasons aren't bad, they're just not as good. Trust me, if you can do a 650 episode marathon of this show and still have positive feelings towards it afterwards, that has to mean something. If I just happen to catch a TV broadcast of The Simpsons, I won't complain or object. The season won't matter, as long as it's not a clip show, it still amounts to 22 minutes of enjoyment. No, what I want to talk about is the packaging. With seasons 1 through 10, it was all fine. Standard DVD box sets with holsters for the discs. It's basic, but it works. For seasons 11 through 20, we get by far the worst packaging in my entire collection. You open up one of these sets and you may think all is fine. The interiors at least look nice, and hey, it's better than having a bland case. Just look at season 19, the artwork in that looks amazing. I don't think it justifies the price I paid for it, but there is a lot of passion here. Artwork like this would give the initial impression that these box sets could be great. And then you stop to think, where are the discs? Up until this point, we have something along the lines of this. But where do we keep the discs in these later sets? That is atrocious. You know how easy it can be for DVDs to get scratched? This is how you speedrun it. Don't keep them in plastic holsters. Hide them in very thin cardboard slots. Having to almost tear the cardboard just to grab hold of a disc is infuriating. Yes, you can get the discs out, but good luck doing it more than once or twice without actually damaging them. Sometimes the disc can be in the slot upside down, dramatically increasing the risk of damage. Yeah, everything up to season 15 can be found on eBay for dirt cheap, but you'd have to be committed to the series to be happy with the idea of constantly replacing discs. Anything after that is when the prices start to elevate. Season 18 alone costs more than the first 10 seasons put together. I don't care what release it is, it could be something great like Groundhog Day, or it could be something garbage like Home Alone 4. No one wants a box or case like this. Ever. If these masterpieces came packaged like this, I'd never want to touch them again. Time to give these some ratings. These reflect the packaging alone and not the quality of entertainment included. 
Seasons 1 through 10 get a 5 out of 5. I see no problems with them whatsoever. If anything, these should be the gold standard on how to package a TV show on DVD. Seasons 11 through 15 get 3 out of 5. The packaging starts to suffer here, and while the sets are cheap enough to replace, you really shouldn't have to. Season 19 is an overpriced limited release, but it has really nice artwork on the inside. Clearly someone put a fair bit of thought into it, so that gets a super generous 2 out of 5. Seasons 18 and 20 get 1 out of 5. For the prices these seasons go for, these sets are a complete joke when it comes to product quality. Once again, this has nothing to do with the actual quality of whatever season of the show each set represents. If season 18 was packaged like this, I would be perfectly happy with it. But, my gripes with these cases aside, I love this collection. I've loved The Simpsons for over 15 years, and Teenage Me would have happily had the entire series on DVD at the drop of a hat. Of course, at this point, it doesn't look like the rest of the series will get released on DVD, not while Disney Plus is available. And yes, I'm missing some compilation DVDs and about a million VHS releases, but to own 20 seasons, over 440 episodes on one shelf, that's pretty good. It's a lot better than Pokemon. Now what's the packaging like with that series? Who gives a shit? Cut to black!